Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journal Club on Landmark Papers in Surgery. I'm Austin Williams, a general surgery resident from Lankanaw Medical Center, and I will be briefly reviewing a randomized controlled trial assessing the benefit of adjuvant radiation in patients with soft tissue sarcoma undergoing limb preservation. The study's first results were presented in a manuscript in the Journal of Clinical Oncology in 1998, with a 20-year follow-up published in the Annals of Surgical Oncology in 2014. Soft tissue sarcomas of the extremity are a diverse group of malignant neoplasms arising from primitive mesenchymal cells such as muscle and bone. The treatment of these cancers involves a multidisciplinary team whose goals include preservation of limb function and achieving long-term survival. Prior to the 1960s and 70s, amputation was the mainstay surgical treatment of limb sarcomas, but the addition of radiation with similar rates of survival allowed for limb-sparing surgical options. However, complications of radiation, such as loss of function or ultimately loss of limb, were also reported. Around the same time, the addition of chemotherapy to sarcoma treatment regimens also showed promise in improving patient outcomes. However, large randomized trials of these therapies were missing. Therefore, the group at the National Cancer Institute, who also were evaluating chemotherapy separately, designed a prospective randomized controlled trial to test the hypothesis that adjuvant radiation improves patient outcomes without prohibitive morbidity in patients undergoing limb-sparing surgery in non-metastatic extremity soft tissue sarcomas. The study was performed at the National Cancer Institute, where patients with extremity sarcomas treated with limb-sparing surgery were enrolled between 1983 and 1991. Surgical excision, aimed for a margin of 1 to 2 centimeters, or an uninvolved fascial plane, or, at a minimum, the removal of all gross disease. Close or limited positive margins were acceptable if it would spare the patient major disability. Patients with metastatic disease, history of a second malignancy, or any contraindication to doxorubicin or cyclophosphamide chemotherapy, or contraindication to radiation, were excluded. The primary endpoints that the group measured included local recurrence-free survival, metastatic disease-free survival, and overall survival. They also measured quality of life measures every six to 12 months using multiple tools, including the functional living index for cancer, and they focused specifically on muscle strength, joint motion, the presence of edema, and wound complications. A total of 141 patients with extremity soft tissue sarcomas underwent limb sparing surgery and were divided into groups by tumor grade. 91 patients had high-grade sarcomas. All patients with high-grade tumors received adjuvant chemotherapy with doxorubicin and cyclophosphamide. Patients were randomly assigned using fixed blocks based on surgical margins, proximal limb versus distal limb tumors, and grade two or three tumors to receive either chemotherapy alone or a course of adjuvant radiation to 4,500 centigrade given concurrent to their chemotherapy. The patients with low-grade tumors were randomly assigned using fixed blocks based on whether the sarcoma was a primary or recurrent tumor, the surgical margins, and whether the tumor was grade 1 or a high-grade benign lesion. 24 of the 50 patients were randomized to ongoing surveillance with physical examination and chest radiograph, while 26 patients were randomized to the same adjuvant radiation regimen used in the high-grade group. Chemotherapy was not used in the low-grade group. Demographic analyses demonstrated balanced randomization in both the high- and low-grade groups. As expected, there were a wide variety of soft tissue sarcoma types included in the study. The most common histology overall, and also the most common high-grade tumor, was synovial cell sarcoma, while myxoid-type liposarcoma was the most common low-grade tumor. We will first examine the results from the high-grade cohort. Survival analyses with a median follow-up of 9.6 years were presented in the initial 1998 report. There were no local recurrences in patients who were randomized to adjuvant radiation and chemotherapy, 
while there were nine recurrences in the group randomized to chemotherapy alone, a difference that was statistically significant. However, there was no significant difference between the groups in the probability of developing distant metastatic disease. And finally, there was also no difference in overall survival between the groups, with the estimated 10-year overall survival being 75% for patients receiving adjuvant radiation plus chemotherapy and 74% for those receiving care- chemotherapy alone. The overall survival trend persisted in the 2014 update shown on the right, in which the median follow-up was 17.9 years overall and 20.9 years for survivors. Only 13% of patients were lost to follow-up over this time frame. Again, there was no difference between the groups in overall survival, but do note that after 25 years, the survival curves begin to diverge. Moving on to the low-grade group, Radiation was associated with a significantly improved rate of local recurrence when compared to surveillance alone, as shown here, a trend similar to the high-grade cohort. There was no difference in overall survival between treatment groups in both the 1998 and 2014 analyses, the latter of which is shown on the right. All patients, regardless of tumor grade, were grouped for assessment of quality of life measures. The authors compared patients who had undergone adjuvant radiation and those who had not. All quality of life measures were equivalent at baseline. Postoperative analysis revealed no differences noted between the cohorts in overall functional living index and also no significant differences between the groups in muscle strength. Joint motion was significantly reduced in patients who had undergone radiation therapy for up to 36 months after surgery. There was also a transient increase in extremity edema in the adjuvant radiation cohort. Finally, there was a slightly higher rate of wound complications in the radiation group, but these differences were not significant. The study's major strengths are that it is a prospective randomized trial and presents the longest follow-up of any series documenting the impacts of adjuvant radiation on survival and limb function in patients with soft tissue sarcomas of the extremity. The major weakness of the study is its sample size. Overall, only 70 patients were randomized to adjuvant radiation, 44 of whom were in the high-grade cohort. By the time of data collection for the follow-up study, almost 40% of patients had died and 13% were lost to follow-up, leaving only 54 of the 141 patients who completed the follow-up survey. To summarize and conclude, the results of this trial demonstrate that optimal surgical treatment is essential in the management of soft tissue sarcomas of the limb given the outstanding outcomes data regardless of randomization arm. And these excellent results yielded too few local failures to identify specific risk factors for recurrence. Ultimately, the authors note that adjuvant radiation enhanced local control of soft tissue sarcomas of the limbs without statistically significant differences in overall survival. They do note that survival curves diverged in the most recent analysis of survival, and given the small sample size we already discussed, there was limited statistical power to detect a difference. Since radiation caused some morbidity as it related to limb function and quality of life, and that over the course of greater than 20 years, there is not a statistical difference in overall survival, The authors conclude that adjuvant radiation should be used in patients most at risk for local recurrence in order to minimize the risk of loss of function and loss of limb due to preventable recurrence. I'm Austin Williams, a general surgery resident at Lankanal Medical Center. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email or on Twitter at adwilliams5. Don't forget to review this content with the current This Week in Score module, Soft Tissue Sarcomas. Thanks for listening.